I think it was the church's intention when these readings were put together to weave in the theme of thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, this gospel, if you look in the lectionary for Thanksgiving Day here in the United States, this is the gospel that is used. It is a gospel of thanksgiving in a sense. But there's more going on today in the scriptures than thanksgiving or the lack of thereof. And it has to do with leprosy, it seems. Naaman in the Old Testament has leprosy. Ten people in the New Testament have leprosy. But in the gospel, you know the lepers are disconnected from Jesus. But we don't have a little bit of background. I think enough background in this selection from kings as to why Naaman is here in discussion with Elisha. Let me give you a little story. Elisha is, is one of the key prophets of a book named after the kings. And you would think a book named after kings was to talk about their exploits and accomplishments. Actually, when the scripture scholars put these books together, the book of kings was really about the failures of the kings and the, and the work of the prophets who pointed out to the kings what their failures were. So here we have Elisha as the star in this section of the, of the Old Testament book of kings. And we hear about Naaman. What happened? Naaman is, a, is an outsider. He's not a Jew. He's an outsider. He has nothing to do with Jerusalem. The, the enemies of Jerusalem. Naaman is a general. Naaman come down, comes down with leprosy. Leprosy is a debilitating illness. And in those days, it was thought of as a curse. And if you were a leper, as a matter of fact, if you have any this disfigurements on your face, your body, you were, you were considered unclean by ritual behavior in the Jewish cult. So what happens is Naaman comes down and he realizes that he has leprosy and he is soon going to be shunned by his society. It's a political, it's a religious behavior. So he would not have been surprised, but he's upset. It's Hansen's disease, today we know, and there, there is a cure for it. And it's and it, I think back to Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who used to go into the slums and pick up the, the lepers, not fearing she would catch it because they have the right antibiotics and medication for it. Okay, so now Naaman comes to, to uh, his wife, and, and he lets her know that he has leprosy. His wife's servant is a Jewish girl who was caught in a battle and brought over to the enemy as the servant of Naaman's wife. This little Jewish girl has faith. She says to Naaman's wife, send him to the Holy Land. Send him to Jerusalem. He'll, he'll be cured. So Naaman gets upset with that. Hey, listen, with all we have here, why do we have to go to Jerusalem to be cured? The kid says, tell him to go. Push him. You know, the, 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 the power behind the throne, push him. Tell him, to, tell him where to go. So the wife encourages Naaman. Naaman goes. However, Naaman goes to the king, and the king now sees this as a political sabotage, and he says, whoa, don't come here. I don't cure people, because if, if you leave here with leprosy the way you came in, you're going to be blaming me and all, all the people in your nation and my nation will think that I'm either the cause of it or, or I have no power. Beat it. Elisha is there, the prophet. Whoa, he says, send him over here. Elisha who's a prophet of God, who does what God wants him to do, says to Naaman, go wash yourself in the Jordan. That's it? I come all the way here from, a, from another world, and you tell me to go wash? We have water in my country. I, I could have washed there. And the, and the little girl says, do it, do it, do it. You know, go do what the prophet tells you to do. So he goes off, and he plunges himself in the water seven times, as Elisha told him, and he's cured. And the scripture tells us his skin becomes like that of a young child. The young child who encouraged him to go in faith to Elisha, God's prophet. In gratitude, Naaman says, and this is where we pick it up, Naaman says, what can I give you? Anything, gold, jewelry, money, let, let me write a check. Anything, because I have to repay you for this. And Elisha says, no, no, no. God did the healing. You, you had a, a healing mass here yesterday, Father Frank was telling me. 
And healing masters are so important for the spiritual and the physical and the emotional healing that all of us need. So Naaman wants to write him a check or give him money. And he says, no, 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 go back to your own land and just carry this faith with you. According to the tradition of their times, he says, okay, give me some soil. And he takes bushels of soil back to his country so he can put the soil down on the land of his country and there kneel and pray to the God, the only God, Yahweh, the God that healed him, the God who, through the intercession of Elisha and a little girl, does something that's fantastic that no one else could imagine doing for him. So that's the, that's the story of Naaman. And we hear that, and he says, if you will not accept, please let me, a servant, have some dirt so I can pray to the Lord. That's why we're here today. We come from all sections of town, and together we bring our various issues, but we come to pray to the Lord because of our faith. Very key element in these Gospels today and the Old Testament reading today. That now we jump up to Jesus in the, in the New Testament, and we hear ten lepers. It's a very significant number in Judaism. Ten is a minion. And a minion is the minimum number of people who can gather in synagogue or temple to pray. So if you had five people, you couldn't say the prayers. A ten, a minion. This is a minion, a group of ten, of lepers. Disgusting, horrible lepers. And among those ten lepers is a leper of a leper. Among those ten is a Samaritan. I don't think you and I have... I hope we and I don't have that kind of hate that the Jews and the Samaritans at this time in history had for each other. The Samaritans and Jews came from the same roots. One worshipped in Mount Gizram, one worshipped in Mount Sion. They were separate, but they were the same culture, the same blood, but they hated each other. They worshipped differently. They were rivals. Jesus couldn't walk through Samaria when he was going to, to the Holy Land on his voyages that we recorded over and over here in, in the Gospel of Luke. So among those ten, there's one who is really doomed further leprosy. But interesting, his leprosy, his illness, unites him with his enemies. A kind of irony here going on. Maybe they all were ill, but he was signaled out to be the most sick because he was a leper and a Samaritan. And in our society, that's the person who is tortured. That's the person who is bullied. That's the person who is looked down upon because of his orientation, his color, or his language. In a society of ill people, one person sticks out, and it's the Samaritan. Goes off. Jesus says, go, Jesus says, go show yourself to the priests. Because in showing themselves to the priest, only the priest could give them the okay to come back into society. So we're presuming that once they got to the priest, because it says it very clearly, on their way they were cleansed. So they went to the priest. But this guy, the Samaritan, the outsider, the one who in our society would be bullied, the one who in our society would be looked down upon, comes back as a symbol of hope, comes back as a symbol of faith. He comes to Jesus, and what you would normally have done in the temple, he does in front of Jesus. He gets down on his hands and knees and praises God in front of Jesus, who healed him. Jesus says, no, I, I didn't heal you. Your faith healed you. Go. Your faith healed you. He says that to us as well. If we do not leave our worship, our mass, with a deeper sense of faith, we are denying Jesus. If we don't leave our, our celebrations of liturgy with a commitment to really be people who ch attempt to change the, the face of this world and this society and who read the newspapers and realize what is evil in the newspapers and do our best in our local community, in our homes, in our towns to change it, we're denying Jesus. And they're not my words. Paul, 
in this letter to Timothy. If we persevere with Jesus, we'll reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. Could you imagine the embarrassment of having gone to church all our lives, done all the right things in reference to church, and in our social interactions, we're prejudiced, we're anti-this, anti-that, anti-that, let me be clear, anti-black, anti-gay, anti-Hispanic, anti-Latino, anti, and the list can go on. That's a denial of Jesus. That's a denial of our faith. Imagine going through a, a wonderful Christian life and out there not being Christian, but only limiting to our worship church buildings. And on our deathbed, Jesus says, don't even know you. I'm denying you just the way you denied those people out there when you came across them because they had a disability or because they were weak in some way or because they were shunned by society or because they had a different orientation. You deny them, you denied me, and now I deny you. It's a beautiful day here in the autumn. You may have thought, oh, we're going to come to church and hear some beautiful words. The words are beautiful. As serious as they are, they are beautiful because they free us. They encourage us to use our faith to go out there and fight prejudice and fight anger and fight disease of all sorts, mental, physical, psychological, to the best of our ability. Oh, and yes, the theme is Thanksgiving. Let me tell you a story about Thanksgiving. A group of grandmothers had this coffee clutch every week. And they were complaining one particular week about, you know, I send my grandchildren, my nieces, my nephews, envelopes for all the holidays, Christmas, Easter, birthdays, everything. I never get a thank you back. And one grandmother said, oh, Christmas time, I have 10 grandchildren. And they all came to thank me personally. Well, everyone was, at the, you know, tell me, what happened? I didn't sign their check. 